Hi, I'm Gerard. In this lesson, we continue with if statements. You will learn how to simplify compound Boolean operators that are often the cause of cluttered and unreadable code. As usual, I will start by demonstrating the solution we will create over the next two lessons. If you are new here, we focus on specific code concepts in every lesson. So to save some time, I do not go into the development of the user interface of the applications we create. You can watch the video and observe how I created the user interface and named the components and try and create it yourself. From around module 4.1 I demonstrate how to create simple user interfaces and how to name your visual components. But if you want to save time and jump in immediately, you can go to the description below this video. There you will find the link that takes you to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. There you can download the starter and the solution project files. And I'm using a free edition of Delphi 10.3 Community Edition that I downloaded from Embargadero's website. You can also go download your own free copy. The link to the download is also in this video's description. Go download the files and the software and come back to write the code with me. While you do the downloads, I will quickly demonstrate our project. We will create a simple solution that describes a character that you will type into this edit. Today we will only do sets with letters in the alphabet, but next time you will also explore sets with numbers. If you type a val and you click the button, this panel must show val. We will write code for uppercase and lowercase inputs. If you type a character that is not a val, the panel must show consonant. When you type a number, the program must show not in alphabet. But in the next lesson, we will change this code to display if it is an even or an odd number. Also notice how the button is disabled when the edit is blank, and enabled when you do enter a character in the edit. If you type any other character that is not in the alphabet, the panel must show not in alphabet. This program may not look like much, but there is a few lessons that we will learn from this. So let's dive in. If you downloaded the starter files, open it in your IDE and let's start. This is the project in my IDE. Let me first show you a few properties for some of the components on the form. The name of this edit is EDT Character. The max length property is set to 1. That will limit the number of characters you can type to only 1. Select the button. It is called BTN Show Description. Its enabled property is set to false, so initially you will not be able to click it. And the name of the panel is PNL Description. Let's start by double clicking the edit. This is the event handler for the onChange event of EDT character. The onChange event of an edit is triggered every time you insert a new character or when you make any changes in the edit. This will execute even if you remove characters. So it is a nice place to validate and respond to changes in the edit as you type the values. We must check when the edit is blank or when it contains text to ensure that the button is enabled or disabled at the appropriate times. When the edit is blank, the button must be disabled. If it has a character, the button must be enabled. Go above begin, type var, on the next line type bln not blank text as boolean. This boolean variable will be used to store true if the edit is not blank and false if it is blank. Go under begin and type this statement. bln not blank text colon equals edt character dot text not equals quote quote. Here we read if the text in EDT character is not equal to an empty string. Notice there is nothing between the two inverted commas, so that means we check if the text is blank. This expression will evaluate to true or false. The result is then assigned to the boolean variable called bln not blank text. Let me also show you another way. Replace not equal with equals, then type not in the front and enclose the expression in brackets. In the last lesson we explored logical operators like AND, OR and EXCLUSIVE OR. The NOT operator is also a logical operator. It just checks for the opposite of what the expression returns. In other words, it just does the inverse. Go to the next line and type btn show description dot enabled colon equals bln not blank text. We also did something similar in the last lesson. We take the result of the expression, which can only be true or false, and assign the result to the enabled property of btn show description. So every time you make a change in the edit, this event handler will check the enabled status of the button. Run the application. Notice the button is disabled. Enter something in the edit. See how that enables the button. Clear the text. Now the button is disabled again. You can also test it with any other characters. Now that was easy. 
Close the form. Click the Design tab to view the user interface. Double click the button. This is the event handler for the on-click event of BTN Show Description. Go above Begin and type var. Then on the next line, chr character as char. Go one line down, type str description as string. Remember the edit can only take one character because the max length property is one. So chr character will be used to store that character. str description will be used to store a description or a characteristic of the value you type in the edit, like vowel, consonant or not in the alphabet. Go under begin and type this statement. Here we read the first character in the text of edt character and assign it to chr character. Although the edit can only take one character, we must still extract the character from the text property by using an index between block brackets. This character will then be assigned to chr character. Go to the next line and type this if statement exactly as I type it. Here we check if the character stored in chr character is in the range of uppercase letters a to z or in the range of lowercase letters a to z. We can use OR operators for all the uppercase letters and all the lowercase characters in the alphabet. That will be 52 different expressions, 26 for uppercase letters and 26 for lowercase letters, all of them separated by OR operators. But that will make our code too complex and messy. So instead of having so many compound boolean expressions, we simplify it with sets. A set can be used to make our code shorter and easier to read. We use it to simplify boolean expressions especially when we have many expressions that must be evaluated by an if statement. Sets can only be used with ordinal types. I did explain ordinal types in Unit 11.1 .1 and 11.2 where we explored ASCII characters, but I will quickly explain it again. An ordinal type is a data type that has values that follow each other in a logical and regular sequence. Like all the integer types like byte, small int and integer. For example, 2 follows 1. 3 follows 2, and we know for certain what will follow 3, so the sequence is logical and predictable. All integer types are therefore ordinal. Characters also follow each other in a logical and predictable sequence. Because characters have ASCII numbers that range from 65 to 90 for uppercase letters and 97 to 122 for lowercase letters. You can go back to Unit 11.1 .1 and 11.2 if you are not familiar with ASCII. Let's look at examples of sets with characters. This if statement checks if chr letter is uppercase A. If so, the value true will be assigned to the boolean. Easy. The next vowel in the alphabet is E. Here we add the second expression to check for uppercase E. And then uppercase I. And then uppercase O. And it already starts to look messy. Then uppercase U. That's only for all the uppercase vowels in the alphabet. But if you also have to check for all the lowercase vowels, it starts to look like a dumpster fire. If you simplify it, it looks like this. Much better. So here we use an in operator with square brackets and we include all the vowels between brackets. The characters are enclosed in single quotes and separated by commas. If you must check if the character is any uppercase letter in the alphabet, you can do it like this. Here we include all the uppercase letters from capital A to capital Z in a range. We use two dots to indicate it is a range in an ordinal sequence. That is all the ASCII numbers from 65 to 90. And this statement is for all the lowercase letters from A to Z, or ASCII numbers 97 to 122. And this is a set with two ranges. It checks for both uppercase and lowercase letters. But my favorite Nutty Professor said I must make it as simple as possible, but not simpler. You can make this even simpler. You can change the uppercase Z to a lowercase Z, then you only have one range between the brackets. Remember, in ASCII lowercase characters follows uppercase letters. So this will check all the characters from uppercase A to lowercase Z in only one range. Let's go back to our project. This if statement checks if CHR character is in the uppercase or the lowercase ranges of the letters in the alphabet. Go to the next line and type begin. Go between begin and end and type a comment. Code for alphabetical characters. We will come back to this later. Remove the semicolon after the end and go to the next line. Type else. And on the next line begin. Go between begin and end. Type another comment. Code for anything else. We will also finish this in a moment. 
Go on the end and type PNL description dot caption colon equals str description. Here we read the value in str description and we assign it to PNL description. We didn't assign a value to str description yet, so let's go do that. Go under the comment in the else branch, type str description colon equals not in the alphabet. The if statement checks for uppercase and lowercase letters in the alphabet. So this else block will execute for any characters that do not meet that criteria. That will be numbers and special characters. Now go under the comment you typed in the if branch. Type if followed by a space. Let's first check for the vowels the hard way, then we will simplify it. Hopefully you will then appreciate the use of sets even more. Over type true with chr character equals uppercase a. This expression must be between brackets. After this expression, type OR CHR character equals uppercase E, also between brackets. Do the same for uppercase I, and for uppercase O, and for uppercase U. Then continue with lowercase a, lowercase e, lowercase i, and lowercase u. Now we have one big dumpster fire. Put your cursor after then and make a new line. Type begin, go between begin and end. Type str description colon equals bell. If the input is any of these characters, the if statement will evaluate to true. They are all vowels, so here we store the word vowel in str description. We will use str description here as the output for the caption of the panel. Remove the terminator after the end statement. Type else. On the next line type begin. Go between begin and end. Type str description colon equals consonant. Now let's check what we have done. This whole if statement first checks if the character is in the alphabet. If not, this else branch executes and stores not in the alphabet in str description. If it evaluates to true, the inner if statement will check if the character is a vowel. If so, we assign the word vowel to the string variable named str description. If the character is in the alphabet, but it is not a vowel, this inner else statement will execute, and the word consonant will be assigned to str description. Notice the outer if statement has its own else and the inner if statement has its own else. There are some other ways to do this as well, but we will explore that in a later lesson. As usual, the statement at the bottom executes regardless of the result of these expressions. Run the application. Type a number. Your output must now show not in the alphabet. Type a lowercase a. You must get vowel in the output. Type a question mark. Not in the alphabet. Type an uppercase b. The output changes to consonant. Close the form. Now let's follow Einstein's advice. Remove all these expressions. After if type chr character in. Followed by block brackets. Between the brackets type all the uppercase and lowercase vowels separated by commas and enclosed in quotes. Like this. That looks much better. And that is how you put out a dumpster fire. Run the program. Test it again with numbers, special characters, vowels and consonants. And make sure you get the correct results. Close the form. The Nutty Professor set as simple as possible. So let's see if we can make it even simpler. This if statement checks for two ranges, one for uppercase letters and one for lowercase letters. Change this uppercase Z to a lowercase Z. Now you can remove this lowercase range because here we cover the whole alphabet in uppercase and lowercase. On this line we read the text in EDT character and assign it to CHR character. This can be uppercase or lowercase. So if we format the character to uppercase and store it in the variable as an uppercase character, we then only have to evaluate uppercase characters with the if statement. Put your cursor here, type uppercase, followed by a round bracket. Close it in front of the line terminator. In unit 10.6, we explored the uppercase string function that formats a whole string to uppercase letters. But it doesn't work with the char data type. 
We use upcase for charge instead. Upcase will only format the specific character that you extract from a string. In this case, character 1 in the edit. Now that the character in the variable will always be an uppercase, we can go back to this inner if statement and remove all the lowercase vowels from this set. Put your cursor here and press backspace to remove all the lowercase vowels. Run the program for a last time. Test again with different characters and make sure you still get the expected results. When you are done, you can close the form and save your project. Next time we will finish this project with odd and even numbers. We will also use sets to simplify compound boolean expressions that evaluates integer types. If you learned something today, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to my patrons on patreon.com. Happy coding and remember keep it as simple as possible. And I will see you next time.